Christ, he forgave us all our sins, having cancelled the charge sheet. Now I put one of these on the wall for you to see because I know that none of you will ever have seen a charge sheet in your lives. And uh, you're all very respectable human beings. Uh, in my last church, of course, um, <laughs> when all this CRB stuff came out, do you remember that? Did, did this happen to me? Oh, oh, amazing. All this CRB stuff came out, and all of a sudden you go to the police check before even the kids work. And of course, our best youth and kids workers are quietly coming along and saying, um, uh, there's something that might show up. Because <laughs> they all thought, you know, I'm not paying for a TV license or whatever, would, uh, would now show up. It's more than that. Um, <laughs> I'll be serious, and everybody in the church would now know this person that. No, it's not going to be like that. Because Christ has taken the charge sheet that was written against us and he's done something quite decisive with it on his cross. We've all got a charge sheet. We've got a charge sheet if we're Jewish people, Paul is saying us, and lived a very religious life or whatever other religion happens to be. We've all got a charge sheet if we haven't had that sort of life. Paul is saying, for all of us, he forgave us all our sins by this means, having cancelled out. And the idea is of balancing a balance sheet or something of the sort where an item of income balances an item of expenditure. He's, he's, he's cancelled all our sins and he's dealt with the chirograph on, the, the signed acknowledgement of our own indebtedness to God. Now, when you take out a mortgage, I'll tell you about this because one day this happens. You take out a mortgage and you sign this piece of paper. Does this ring any painful bells? You sign this piece of paper and you make a commitment of your indebtedness. And here it is, says Paul, there's this indebtedness in sin that you have to acknowledge. And that you know, you know that. As if you sign the charge sheet, yeah, I acknowledge this. And Jesus has dealt with it. The stuff you know about yourself that actually, you know, you'd rather person next to you didn't know what mum and dad didn't know whatever it happens to be that you know about you've signed it you know that's there Paul says he's dealt with that charge sheet of legal indebtedness which stood against us which condemned us he's taken away and he's nailed it to the cross now be very careful at this point because I had a bit of banter recently with a Christian brother who's quite an eccentric character well he thinks the same as me I'm sure um, who's church planting do, do you know Di Hanky over in Trevathan he's a character uh, he's, he's a great man uh, he's on Twitter and I'm on Twitter, and that's about where our lives touch. <laughs> because we're kind of different, <laughs> which is great, but we're brethren together. And he had something on there recently about, you know, all his sins being forgiven at the cross and all this stuff. And I said, yeah, the trouble is, mate, I've got this parrot that comes and sits on my shoulder and whispers in my ear and tells me all sorts of stuff about myself that's been dealt with. But he still comes and sits and talks. And I've got to be careful to brush him off every now and again. And we had this little debate and discussion on Twitter about how that works. I want you to be careful with you. Because although we have this charge sheet against us, which we know about, and which has been true of us, there is, there is an enemy of our souls who comes along. We call him the accuser of the brethren, when he's in Revelation. And he sits on your shoulder and he tells you stuff in your ear that you, you did this. Don't look look so worried. I don't know anything about anything, okay? But, but you do this, you see? Well, yeah, okay, put on somebody else. Um, <laughs> but it happens, doesn't it? Now we've got to be very decisive with that, and what Paul's saying here is extremely relevant to that, because there was a charge sheet. It's real. But Christ has taken that charge sheet, and he has dealt with it at the cross. And when the old parrot comes and sits on your shoulder and whispers nonsense in your ear, you brush him off. Because he's taken it away, nailing it to the cross. Is that not good enough? You know, isn't that good enough to deal with it? What are you talking about? Of course it is. And for this we are intensely grateful, isn't it? And for this we rejoice in the goodness of God to us. It was legal. It stood against us. It condemned us. What did he do with it? That signed certificate of indebtedness, he did three things with it. He took it out of the way. He lifted it up out of the midst. He lifted that out of the way. He picked it out of the pot. You know, when you go home and there's chicken floating about in the stew, is it? Is it chicken in your house? Coffee, chicken and herrings on a Sunday. Uh, you know, you pull that piece out of it, it's gone. It's gone. He took it out of the way. Secondly, he blotted it out. Thirdly, by nailing it to the cross. That verb used for removing the written certificate of indebtedness is to pick it up. He picked it up. It was against us. 
He picked it up and of course he did. He picked it up and took it. And it came down on him. And that taken away was affected by blotting out, which means to, to wipe away or to, to rub out. Now, our computer's wonderful. That's great, honey. Sit down, over there. Remember when I was a kid, somebody came into our house, he, he ran a firm making, it's a bad place to sit. Because <laughs> 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 you keep it in reverse, I'm really sorry, Andy. <laughs> Say rude things to me on Facebook later, it'll be fine. Uh, he used to make semiconductors and stuff in his little factory in the valleys, you know. Uh, for, and he came in in great excitement because there was going to be this thing called a word processor. Remember those? Yes, there was going to be a word processor. And I couldn't see the point because we had a typewriter. It must have been eight or something. What's the point of that? Well, he said, the point is you, can, you make a mistake and you rub it out again. Don't make a mistake. We used to live in that age, and now we live in a different age. Because I write something to my sermon, on the, and I can just go, and it's gone. All too easily, it's gone. Mm. Not always intentionally, it's gone, but there we are, it's gone. Now, Paul had a very useful way of handling the same problem. Because that's a Roman wax tablet. And when you're taking your notes, and you're writing your letters, and doing whatever you're doing, you take the pointy end, here, you see, and you scratch in there the words that you want to say. And if you think, well, that sounds a bit rough, what you do is you turn the thing over. And on the top of it, it's got a big flat bit. And you just smooth the wax pad out again, and it's gone. Isn't that lovely? Yeah? All those spelling mistakes? Gone. Beautiful. Happy days. That wax tablet with the record, with our charge sheet, at the other end of the stylus goes place. A smoothie bit. What he's done is he's taken away that record, that charge sheet of our sins, and he's smoothed it out. He's blotted it out. Well, so when the old parrot comes and sits on the shoulder, we flick him off. Because it's been dealt with. It's blotted out. He took away, took it out of the way, he blotted it out, and he did it by nailing it to the cross. That's his sad. This is a sad bit for me, because I was always taught, Sunday school, when I eventually got to Sunday school, I was always taught, you know, there was a tradition that you'd have a bill that you had to pay, and if somebody remitted your debt and paid it for you, they'd take it and put a nail through it. And that's a great story, isn't it? Isn't that marvellous? Any paid bill had a nail put through it. Fantastic. Apparently, completely without any foundation in fact, that story. So that's gone by the board. But, but what is the case is this. By being nailed to the cross himself, Christ has paid what we were charged of. And expected. 